everybody. So today I'm gonna jump straight into the video and it's gonna be the ultimate Australia Q&A because obviously so many of my videos are aimed at backpackers coming to or already in Australia because I've been in Australia for 14 months now and I get bombarded with messages and emails of all you lovely folk and I thought it's a bad time that I take the top most asked questions and answer them for you. So jumping straight in, let's get on with it. I need to find my questions first, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm gonna start with the number one biggest question I get. How much money should I take with me to Australia? Now, uh, the government recommend, oh by the way, do you like my draining device? I like it. Sidetracked, easily distracted. So how much money should you take with you to Australia? Well, the Australian government recommend that you take 5,500 Australian dollars. That is if you have a return flight. Or maybe I'm wrong. I am wrong. I'm always wrong. You ask me things like I know what I'm on about when I don't. The government recommends you take $5,000 if you have a return flight. If you do not have a return flight booked, then no fear, you just have to have enough cash to cover you to return home. So around five or $6,000 is suffice. I took around 5,500 with me. And to be honest, I still have some of that money left over in my English account. And I didn't start work for the first two months when I was here, so I'd say it's a pretty good amount to take with you. Which will bring me on to question number two, which is, do I need a return flight when coming to Australia? No, you do not. All you need to do is if they ever ask you, which will be my next question, answered, to show how much money you have that you can prove you have enough to support yourself and get yourself home if needs be. It is not like a lot of countries in Asia where you have to show that you have a return ticket. It's not like that. Australia, very loving. Which will then go on to question number three. Will my bank statement get checked at immigration? I cannot say yes or no. Mine didn't. I don't know anyone who has had their bank statement checked when coming over on a working holiday visa at the airport. But the fact is that I know plenty of people who came over with about $1,000 in their bank. Side note, they really regretted that later on. Question number four, is there a season for outback station work compared to fruit picking? Now, as you probably know, if you've done research, fruit picking has seasons because it's fruit, plants. Some of them don't grow all the time. You gotta be waiting for that month or two. Outback work isn't like that. Station and property work will have busier times, but to be honest, it's an all-round job and they're always gonna need people to lend a hand. Question number one. Do you have to travel around Australia and work in different places or can you just stay in one place and work? You can do whatever it is your heart desires. You can literally jump job to job to job to job and travel all over Australia. Or you can find a nice job in Perth, for example, and just stay there and not move. A bit of a wasted visa, if you ask me, as it is a once in a lifetime visa that you get to travel and work all over this astonishing country, but each to their own. Everyone has a different reason for coming to Australia. So if that's what you wanna do, then you can do that. But remember, you can only stay with an employee for six months at a time. Number six, and in the year, do I have to apply for a working holiday visa? Now, Australia isn't technically like Canada. Canada on a working holiday visa, which I am looking into. Exciting. They have very strict deadlines. Whereas Australia, you can apply throughout the year. Once your visa is granted, you then have 12 months to enter the country. Obviously, they have a quota to fill for certain countries, what countries they give certain visas to, and how many in the year. But to be honest, I've never heard of anyone being rejected because they've run out of visas. It's a year-round application. What number are we? Number seven, I think. Are receptionist jobs in hostels common? Very, because as with travelers, you will come and go. You will say to an employee, I will stay four or five months. I love Sydney. And then leave after six weeks because you're going on a road trip with these amazing people. You're just men, you're hostile. And employees kind of expect that. They know it's gonna come. And working in hostels, if you're working for accommodation, then it happens a lot. Very, very common to find a receptionist work or a cleaning work 
in your hostel. However, I found that Darwin is the only city that I know of. They don't do it. So don't come looking for that in Darwin. Do not do it that. Very tempted to do a video telling you all about the struggles of Darwin. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, but um, it's so expensive. It's actually sent backpackers home because they've run out of money. Number eight. Eight. What are the best places to visit on the East Coast? Now, this is going to depend on what you like. Obviously, you've got the major cities. Melbourne, Sydney, Canberra, which I never went to, and apparently, it's not upsetting if you miss it, but each to their own. Sydney, did I say Sydney? I'm saying it again if I did. Sydney and Brisbane. And then you've got your towns up to Cairns and Cape Trib and Cape York, which aren't cities, they're in the rainforest in the middle of nowhere and they're beautiful. So it depends what you're going for and to be honest, I've got to recommend Byron Bay on the coast. Don't go past Byron Bay, everyone will tell you that. Don't miss Melbourne as a city because everyone starts in Sydney and heads up to Cairns and misses Melbourne where you have the Grampians and the Great Ocean Road and a quick boat over to Tasmania and Melbourne as a city is beautiful and phenomenal. I love Melbourne. I can't rate it high enough. And then you've got all your touristy things like Fraser Island and the Whit Sundays and Agnes Water, which is really pretty, and Cairns, and then Port Douglas, Cape Trib, Cape York, right up to the top, the very top of Australia. Which will come on to number nine, I think. I'm bad with the counting. What is the best way to travel around Australia? Now, I'm just gonna go for south, to the east, to the north, and down the center. Greyhound buses are the most popular with backpackers. Oh! I just had like a massive pizza. It tastes great both ways. That was gross, I'm sorry. The mozzarella! Um, <laughs> it's a ridiculously long video already. So, Greyhound coaches are your best way to travel the East Coast. They, tr they, the, the, whew, getting so excited about a bus. The route is extensive, as we can see. You can get into the outback, you can go straight from Melbourne, way up to Cairns, across and down the center, you can even go to Broome. The only place that doesn't service is the, you know, the rest of Australia, the rest of WA, which is kind of large, only the biggest state in the world. Um, but for that, they have amazing train services. From what I've heard, I'll be in Perth in approximately three to four weeks. Flights are booked, going to Bali, and going to Perth, and I will let you know what Perth is like with the transport, as you can't get Greyhound. Other great ways to go around is flying because it is quite cheap, especially if you're going like Melbourne to Sydney, it's like 60 bucks, and Sydney to Brisbane, it's like 100 bucks. It's insanely cheap, so that's your other option. You can also go by train. There are trains, sometimes you can get good deals, sometimes it's ridiculously expensive. I say sit online, look at the bus price, look at the train price, and see. Hey, when are you coming to Alice? I'll be there, don't worry, I will be there. My plan was to go straight down and do the Stuart Highway, straight down and down to Adelaide. However, I didn't have the money and I still don't have the money to do that and Uluru is top of my list of things to see. I cannot come all the way here and not go and see that big red, big red rock, big, a big red rock. Um, but it will be after Perth, so sometime next year. Legs 11. How expensive is Australia in relation to Europe? Now, I will be doing a video on how expensive Australia really is because you may have heard the rumors and they're true. It is expensive as hell. Once you start earning the Australian dollar though, it kind of balances out. The all, all the all. The way I describe it is, even if you smoke or don't smoke, it's kind of a good comparison. A packet of cigarettes here can cost you between 16 and $20 per pack, which may make a lot of people in Britain and America drop to the floor with shock. However, when you're earning 20 or $22 per hour, it kind of balances out. For example, in England, if you're on seven pound an hour, and a pack of smokes, I don't know how much they are now, I'm guessing they've gone up since I left, but say they're seven pounds as well. It's all relative, that's all I can say. Um, so coming over here with your English or American or French or German exchange, it's, it's six pounds. Next a question, I believe, uh, number 12. How much did it cost you to get out here? I paid 550 pounds. 
Ooh, accents. £550 to get out to Australia. But obviously every country will be different. And my only advice is to go onto Skyscanner and instead of selecting a date, you can click any date and you can see how the fla 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 how the prices fluctuate throughout the months. The big question which I really struggle to answer, number 13, is how long should I stay in each place? This completely depends upon you. What I will say now is do not plan a route or anything like that when traveling to Australia because you will not stick to it. I promise you, you have no idea what's going to happen when you get out here. You could land in Sydney and want to think, I'm going to find work straight away. And then realize you don't like Sydney. There's no work there for you and you've got to move on. Or you think I'm going to do a massive two month East Coast trip, then find work. Well, yeah, okay, you might do that. But then you might find a place and make some awesome friends and get offered a job and you don't want to leave straight away. Maybe you'll postpone the road trip and who really knows where on the road trip you want to go yet because you haven't really been out here to discover places. Passion. I'm a necklace by the way. Brought that and the dress. Today, treated myself a whole $16 on this and this. $16. Can't complain. So, how long you should stay in each place? Each place is very different. Depends if you want to travel or to work. My advice is get to a place see how you feel. If you're done in two days, if you're done in two days, you carry on. You want to stay a week, you want to stay two weeks, stay a week or two weeks. Be flexible in your travel plans when you come to Australia. Whatever number we are on right now, the question to that number is, should I pre-book a hostel or just arrive and wing it? To be honest, if you're coming in high season and you're coming to somewhere like Sydney or Melbourne, or if you're coming during a festival, especially a festival, or a big football match, or a rugby match, or anything, you will not get a room. So what I always advise is when you know the date you're gonna arrive somewhere, hop onto hostel bookers on your phone or on your laptop or in an internet cafe and book your first night accommodation. Those hostel bookers will tell you how many beds are left and how many rooms are left. You can see if that hostel is chock a block and then kind of judge it from there. Should I stay in a hostel or rent an apartment? Okay, you are going to work in a, sorry, eyeball it. If you're going to stay and work in a city or a town or the, uh, wherever, wherever you're staying to work, you think I want to spend a few months here, work for a bit, save some money, then carry on, move on then renting an apartment will be your cheapest option, especially if you meet some people who want to do it with you. I have a house share here in Darwin. Now back to what I was saying about Darwin, I can stay cheaper in Sydney than I can in Darwin. Darwin has a reputation all over Australia for being so extra, astronomically? Astronomically, words, they're playing with my tongue. Astronomically expensive for no reason whatsoever. It's not like it's really anything like, the city isn't covered in gold, let's just put it like that. And they will charge you $250 per week to stay in a 10 share dorm in a crappy hostel. Because I got a little apartment I share with three other people and it cost me 120 a week. And it's on Smith Street, which is the main street of the city. I'm on the West End, so just a little walk to the city. So yes, renting an apartment, getting a house share, getting onto Gumtree, cheaper than a hostel. This will probably be the last Q&A video I do on Australia for a while. I wanna do more variety videos. I feel my subscribers, guys. Not all of you wanna to come to Australia. The only reason I'm doing this video is because I can. It's a great source of information and Australia is backpacker central. So I thought this will help the masses, but as you know, I try and mix it up for you guys, and I'll keep mixing it up like a big pot of cake fix. And on that note, I'm gonna go because I've been recording for 20 minutes now, and um, I think that's long enough. So don't forget you can subscribe, click that button down below, and keep up to date on all my travels, and get some advice as well. Don't forget there is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Psycho Traveler, but of course the links are in the down bar below. And I will see you next week because next week I will see you, I think, I promise. I will try and see you next week, but I'm flying to Bali and that's just a little bit exciting. So don't forget to follow me on social media and I will be posting so many photos and I will get videos, lots of follow me around stuff in Bali, the markets, the rice paddies. We'll go hiking, we're going island hopping and I'm just gonna be like, having those three weeks on film and it's gonna be so much fun editing them. But anyway, I'm rambling. Stop talking, Ali. 
No one cares. I hope you all have a very good week and have a beer for me. Or if you really love me, you know what other alcohol to have. And that is a big glass of wine. I love you.